Now we're going to kick it over to our on-the-spot correspondents who are reviewing the Mortal Kombat movie. Hey, I'm Owen. I'm Dylan. And today, we're checking out the new Mortal Kombat movie. Here's the trailer. First learned about this seven years ago. On a mission in Brazil to capture a wanted fugitive. When we got there, it tore through our unit in seconds. The target had superhuman abilities. had the same marking you do, Cole. It's a birthmark. What do you mean? He was born with it. It's not a birthmark, Cole. It means you've been chosen. Throughout history, different cultures all over the world reference a great tournament of champions. That dragon marking? I think it's an invitation to fight for something known. Mortal Kombat. These are your champions. I'm Sonya. That's Kano. I'm Liu Kang. Name's Jax. Kung La. Lord Raiden. The fate of Earth is in our hands. No matter how many of my people you put in the ground, we will not fail. Kill them. I am Sub Zero. Fucking beauty. So that was the trailer for Mortal Kombat. And the movie starts in an interesting place. It starts in like uh, ancient Japan, I think. And we're watching uh, Hanzo Hisashi just kind of live his life. He has a wife and a kids. And some like rival of his, Bihan, comes and they like duke it out. Mm -hmm. And that kind of sets the stage for, I feel like, everything that goes on because then after that scene, we're taken to present day and it's kind of implied that Cole, who's the main character, is like, you know, a descendant or like a, you know, great, great grandkid of Hanzo um, Hisashi. And we kind of get him, we see that he has the same marking as Hanzo and like see that he's fighting the same kind of losing battle he's you know kind of a washed up boxer um just doing pay-per-view fights uh it's kind of sad actually just oh, to, like man. you know see where he is in life and that's when bihan sub-zero shows up again and like starts going after him because apparently the marking that they have some kind of tournament that all dimensions have to compete and basically it's a lot of information thrown at you pretty quick and I don't know for me if it really hit or like if I completely understood what the tournament was about or I don't know. Did you like really get invested in that? Yeah, I mean, the only reason that I was somewhat able to kind of follow the narrative of the tournament and of, um, you know, the characters in Outworld and stuff and Shang Tsu and the sorcerer who, who's trying to destroy Earth, Earthrealm is because I played the Mortal Kombat video game. I, Mortal Kombat 10 was the, you know, first Mortal Kombat I owned. And uh, I wasn't super into it as like a little kid because I was afraid of the blood and gore, but kind of got past that. And, uh, you know, the video game definitely embraces the kind of the corniness, the cheesiness. And I thought the movie would lean into that more than it did. And it did at some points, you know, we got like 
you know, characters just saying fatality and, uh, you know, per flawless victory, which I thought was funny. Um, but as far as the, the narrative goes, I, I respect the fact that they wanted to at least make it somewhat of a story and, you know, give us a protagonist to follow along with because I watched the original Mortal Kombat movie a while ago, the one from the 90s, and it's bad. I mean, if you think this doesn't really have much of a story, I mean, that, that kind of tries to throw you into the universe too quickly and just introduce you to all the characters, uh, you know, in the Mortal Kombat franchise and in the, in the kind of universe. Um, and there are so many that uh, this movie kind of took a step back and was like, all right, we're going to focus on one guy, Scorpion, and, you know, this, this uh, descendant of his, Cole, this, yeah, washed up MMA boxer. Uh, and it, yeah, it's depressing to see Scorpion's bloodline go from this badass ninja who, you know, has a spear and like controls fire to just this guy who gets his ass kicked. Exactly. And I think you kind of mentioned it a little while back about how campy and like cheesy the video games are and honestly i would have loved more of that in the movie and like there are some nods to it you know when um they're right speaking two different languages but they still like get each other understand each other um and then i think the character of kano was maybe like the closest to that kind of comedy or campiness but i don't know i didn't didn't like come all the way through and i i found it pretty annoying to be honest just like his character and everything I don't know what did you feel like yeah. did you think the acting was was up to par no I didn't <laughs> straight up I did not uh Cole's character um you know this descendant of Scorpion he's not very well spoken he's not very likable as a dude um the only reason we really root for him is because we see his family uh you know is kind of a reflection of Scorpion's family in the very beginning um Hanzo Asashi's family that was killed by Bihan. And so in that, we see a little bit of, you know, why, why he is chosen. And, uh, you know, that, that kind of sets up the story well, but Cole's performance, the, the actor was just absolutely wooden, like just not very compelling at all. Um, and the, I mean, the, the dialogue was also very poorly written, you know, every other line he's talking about, I got to do this for my family. And like, oh, I, I can't, it, you know, every, every, you know, trope uh, that's in this kind of, uh, oh, this, this guy has chosen, you know, he has special powers for no reason. Like every trope came through, you know, at first he was hesitant to do it. Uh, his training wasn't go, going well. Uh, he couldn't unlock his, his special ability. I forget what they called in the movie, but it's not till, uh, Goro, uh, this, you know, four armed beast from Outworld shows up to kill his family, that he finally unlocks his potential. And um, yeah, in speaking about the characters, Kano was definitely a, a highlight for me just because he kind of broke up the monotony of, um, I don't know, pre pretentious dialogue, kind of, of, you know, Cole and Sonya Blade, who, you know, she was a, a little bit of a more interesting character than Cole. Um, but I, you know, I was saying to you after the movie, they introduced Johnny Cage at the very end, this Hollywood actor who is chosen to compete in the Mortal Kombat tournament. And I honestly really wish they put him in this movie because it would have given another, you know, a source of comic relief besides Kano, who just had to keep repeating these repetitive one-liners, you know, the pop culture references. They were funny the first two, maybe three times, but they, they definitely got old. If you could rate this movie out of 10, what would you give it? I think for me, as someone who hasn't played the video games, just no clue what was going on, I'm, I'm going to give it like a 3.5 out of 10. Just not rocking with it. How about you? Fair enough. Uh, I'd be a little bit more generous. Uh, you know, they did lean into the cheesiness a little bit, which I liked. So I'll, I'll give it 4, 4.5. All right, back to you guys in the studio. That's all for this week. If you want to follow more Review Crew content, go to the Review Crew Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as Orange TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. Find the Review Cues podcast on Spotify or on our website at orangetvnetwork.syr.edu, where you can also find our blog and more OTN information. See you next week.
Thank you.